This is Richard Linton. The best way to describe him is he's an internationally respected artist who recreates moments in time with unmatched realism and integrity. His career has spanned 50 years and limited editions of his works are in private collections all over the world. He is now reluctantly parting with two of his original paintings, The Founding of Melbourne and Melbourne by Moonlight, Burke Street, 1875. They are truly unique works of art. I don't think there's anything else like either of them since. So uh, mine are the only one that uh, portrays when it was first settled and 40 years later, from virgin bush to what it was in 75, to one of the biggest cities in the world. So it's a, a good record of, of part of Melbourne then. Richard Linton's pedigree is impressive. Apprenticed at 16 in the printing trade, he trained in photolithography, but already was consumed by a passion for sailing ships. His first painting was the Cutty Sark in 1957, then a breakthrough in 1978 when he was commissioned by the Franklin Mint to have his paintings reproduced in the old method of hand lithography and displayed in Paris at the famous House of Moulot, where the great artists Chagall, Matisse and Picasso had their works produced. He twice won the prestigious Heidelberg Award, establishing himself as a marine artist. And then uh, in 83 I did a painting of the America's Cup, and that was my first real uh, limited edition that I actually made them myself. So it sort of grew from there. All Richard's sailing ship images are the result of time-consuming, painstaking research. But one marine painting in particular was a dream that lasted most of his life. The River Min, which I spent in uh, actual painting, uh, the execution of painting took me five years and one year to do my preliminary drawing after I'd done all the research, which uh, took probably over a period of 40 years I gathered material for that one painting. I think I finished it in 2004. It was amazing to actually go there. I had an old photograph of uh, looking across the River Min, taken in 1869 when the, uh, the sailing ships were loading tea. And to see that mountain range that I've been looking at for probably nearly 40 years, uh, it was amazing to actually be there and see it. It was like looking at a film star that you've heard of for so long and finally you know, seeing them face to face. There's a maritime museum there and uh, the city of uh, Fuso uh, bought the original to be the uh, nucleus of an exhibition on the tea industry with, with the West. So uh, I was very happy for it to go there and be on display permanently. It's the microscopic precision of Richard's work which has made him famous. You need a magnifying glass to appreciate it just as he uses one to paint it. You have to marvel at such patience to persevere to the end. I always paint with magnifying glass, uh, so I need to get you know, within a couple of inches of the painting to, to see what I'm doing properly. You know? so, uh, because my uh, detail is, is quite minute, like I might have a little face about the size of your fingernail, and uh, if it's somebody you know, and I do put many people that I know in my paintings, I want to get a likeness to them. And uh, you've got to get pretty close to it to actually see, you know, that minute detail that you're putting down. Well, I think it's a love of the subject, really, because I'm not patient in other areas. <laughs> Completely the opposite. But uh, I love the subject and I feel like I'm recreating uh, something from the past uh, so that you feel like you can actually walk into the picture and uh, look around and investigate it. So I, want, I, I want you to feel, or the viewer to feel, that they can actually just walk in, into the past. I use a lot of old photographs as well uh, in my research and uh, so it's like bringing an old black and white photograph back to life in colour. 
When Richard learned a group of enthusiasts was going to build a replica of the sailing ship Enterprise, he was inspired to capture the historic day it arrived at a point in the Yarra River, which is the heart of today's Melbourne city. He named the painting The Founding of Melbourne. I found this little stream, which is the Yarra today, and went up the, uh, the east arm as far as they could go. Uh, and it was blocked by a little uh, waterfall there. And that's, uh, that's where they moored and uh, went ashore and decided this is the spot. Roughly where the aquarium is today. You're looking more or less east, up river from the aquarium. And the waterfall in the background that you can see is where Queen Street Bridge crosses today. The waterfall on the Yarra was later dynamited to allow access further up the river. All the detail in the painting comes from Faulkner's account of what he saw when he arrived and the logbook of Captain Peter Hunter, the captain of the Enterprise. They had two horses on board, which they brought with them, and uh, they were used to help unload. There was also a woman on board, Mary Gilbert, the blacksmith's wife. She was pregnant at the time, and uh, the first baby that was born in Victoria. And the tent and primitive shelter shown behind Mary Gilbert is today the location of Melbourne's Immigration Museum. So I had to show the Indigenous people because it's quite a, quite a, uh, a tribe uh, in Melbourne. And uh, so I've shown a couple on the opposite side of the river who'd be wondering what this great big uh, canoe was <laughs> and these strange white people. It was mainly uh, uh, an open woodland uh, and it was fairly clear underneath. So uh, but all the wattles were out at the time too, because it was August the 29th. Yeah, the wattles were blooming. For the Melbourne by Moonlight, Burke Street, 1875, Richard took 12 months to make a pencil sketch from an old blurry photograph, and then another three years to finish the painting. I've always wanted to do a painting of early Melbourne, because early Melbourne fascinates me. And uh, so I chose this particular one, which was taken in 1875. And then it was a matter of finding uh, photographs, anything I could uh, on all that detail for that particular year. So uh, La Trobe Library has got a great photographic collection and I, I got copies of every one I could, uh, had to do with Burke Street. And, uh, and I bought so many books on the subject as well, that had old photographs. So then uh, after putting it all together, examining nearly every one in the street, every building, uh, then I had to research uh, clothing and uh, carts and omnibuses. One particular omnibus, which I found that was built in, in the USA. I went down to the Smithsonian Institute to their uh, vehicle museum, and here was a perfect one that was restored. And uh, I took photographs, and that was the last sort of uh, piece in the puzzle for that Melbourne picture. At that time, of course, the, uh, the post office on the corner, in the middle, uh, that's how it was in 1875. And Parliament House at that time didn't have uh, Queen's Hall or or the facade, and that was uh, that wasn't completed till about 1900. I think the actual buildings from uh, Elizabeth Street up to Queen Street, where where, you, where you're viewing from, uh, were to do with uh, the vehicle industry, such as saddlers and whip manufacturers and vehicle constructors. So once finding out what the buildings were and who was operating in them, uh, I had to work out what sort of things might be seen in the window. Nobody could tell me I'm wrong. I, I'm absolutely positive that it's exactly what you'd see if you were there on, on that day, 1875. So the originals of these two masterpieces are now on the market. Although very reluctant to part with them, Richard says it's now time. He won't be painting anymore. I 
I've spent so many years, uh, probably over 50 years, painting, always with something in mind. And with my new decal, for 50 years, I was, it seemed like I've almost burnt myself out. And I just want to enjoy what life I've got left to uh, smell the roses. Well, I'd love them to go on public display somewhere, uh, whether it's a gallery or uh, a public building, perhaps in Melbourne somewhere. Uh, I'd hate them to just be lost in private collections. Richard's right. It would be a shame to have these paintings locked away from public view. He travelled back in time to create them, and everyone who closely looks at them can go with him on his journey.